Hello, everybody, and uh, welcome to our webinar today. Um, uh, we have uh, Robert McNay on the line with us, uh, who's assisting us today from SR Oil, and our sales flow former. This uh, webinar, refining on-site processes. Um, before we start, uh, just want to say introduce Robert. Um, Robert is a documentation, data, and engineering IT manager with SR Oil. Robert has literally years of experience in this industry and um, is great. Uh, we're really delighted that uh, he agreed to have a chat with us today to give us his first-hand insights into how Flowforma and automation of processes has helped uh, within his company. Thanks for that, Shay. The, just from a housekeeping point of view, um, just to let everybody know that we are recording the webinar. Um, and if you do need assistance during this webinar, please email info at flowformer.com. Now, your lines are muted, but you can type questions in the chat box. And um, we will, there are a lot of people on this webinar today, so we will try and get to as many questions as we can. And we apologize if we can't get to uh, any of them uh, or to all of them. But if you do have questions that you need to get answered after the point uh, or after this webinar, please forward them on to us and we will uh, answer them um, by reply. Um, after this webinar is completed, uh, we will share the recording with everybody. And we would ask, if you wouldn't mind, um, to complete our feedback form. It really helps us in regards to uh, simulating and uh, assembling our webinars uh, on a regular basis. Thank you very much. So without further ado, I just get um, start from um, with Robert and our case study spotlight today. So Robert, I'm going to fire a few questions in your direction, and um, please feel free to just uh, to uh, let us know exactly what's on your mind. Um, we're all friends here. Can you just tell us, uh, just to give people a background, uh, can you tell us a little bit about SR Oil and your role in it? Yes, certainly, Shay. Thanks for the introduction. Yes. Um, my background is in engineering um, over the past 30 to 40 years, and specifically an instrumentation engineer. But in the mid 1990s, I moved into uh, SAP projects and uh, IT projects around refinery projects and engineering and operations. Um, SR Oil, um, a company based out of Mumbai, uh, basically uh, purchased the refinery where I'm working at, Stanley Refinery in the UK, in 2011 from Shell UK. Um, it's the sickest, second biggest refinery in the UK, and it supplies around about 16% of the UK's road fuel. Uh, we have 800 employees here and about 500 uh, contract staff, um, and probably around about 5,000 people in local industries that we support. Great. Um, so, uh, that's a great background. Thanks a million. Um, you are, as I was saying earlier on, are the manager of the uh, SR Documentation Data and Engineering IT team. Um, presumably, <laughs> you have a lot of responsibility there, Robert. Uh, yes, we do. Um, we look after, as I say, predominantly engineering and projects documentation for the refinery for maintenance and operations. Um, so essentially we have to make sure that the people working out in the field have the right information to do their jobs properly. As you can probably uh, understand if uh, they're trying to work with um, you know, incorrect data doing their jobs, whether it be maintenance or projects or operating the plants, it can cause issues. So yes, there's quite a lot of responsibility uh, that my team have there. Brilliant. That that kind of actually brings me into my next question, and it's just uh, in your role, the challenges you were facing um, before you uh, decided that you needed to automate your processes. Yeah, uh, it, it's a, a large site, Stanlo, as I've said, and it dates to pre-war, and a lot of the processes on the site are paper-based. Uh, one of the main challenges we faced was 
was that the paperwork and the information and uh, documents and data that weren't residing in official uh, projects or engineering uh, IT systems, uh, say sitting on servers or on people's hard drives, that sort of thing, uh, wasn't very structured. So we decided that uh, we needed to address that. And we decided to use SharePoint 2013 as a document management system for non-engineering, non-projects, data and documents, really. Um, we started to implement SharePoint. We had a very expensive consultant doing that work for us. And during that journey, that consultant was building some forms and some uh, workflow for us uh, at a very great expense. And we suddenly yeah. realized that uh, this was going to be quite an expensive and, and lengthy journey because it was time consuming as well. Yeah. So that's led us into uh, the journey of uh, looking for something that we could use uh, to uh, do those workflows and forms. Yeah, so I would imagine with uh, all your disparate locations and the fact that, you know, you have a company that's, say, taking over other sites, et cetera, you're going to have... Um, you're going to have the scenario where data retrieval um, is probably going to be a bit of a headache when you're dealing with all these different locations. Um, from a timing point of view, is the gathering of that data, like do you need to get that as pretty much as fast as possible? You're absolutely right, Shay. Uh, we had a lot of issues uh, with paper-based processes, um, lack of transparency and governance, and also uh, we've been audited quite a few times, and in those audits, it picked up gaps in those business processes. Information used to get lost going around the site. It's a huge site. Um, yeah, so we had a lot of problems we needed to address, essentially. Yeah. Um, was it, and just not an aside, but was it a goal of yours uh, within SR to become self-sufficient? Because I know uh, from your company point of view, you need to become efficient. But was it really important that you were in charge of that so that you were self-sufficient in um, creating and maintaining your processes? Absolutely. It became quite clear to us after a while, you know, uh, especially with having an expensive resource working on some of these processes and it taking quite a long time. Um, we wanted to do sort of a bit more control of that and we started to look at what was available from an IT perspective to allow us to generate our own forms and workflows within the SharePoint environment. And we looked at a number of vendors. Um, the SR procurement process uh, commits us to looking at at least three. Uh, we had them on site, uh, we had demonstrations, and we narrowed them down and ultimately we ended up with uh, your company being the service provider for us. Yeah, great, and we're delighted. Um, it was sort of, we take it for granted here now, to be honest, that um, no code processes are kind of a, a facility that's, that's freely available. But did you realize, I mean, before you saw Flow Format, that y there were no code options uh, available within the marketplace? I suppose the honest answer is no. Uh, until we did start to look, um, we didn't realize that that was one of the options. Uh, as I say, we narrowed it down to three vendors where we thought um, they would fulfill, fulfill the criteria that we wanted, which was specifically, we wanted something that end users who weren't IT programmers could use to develop firms of workflow, i.e. Right. a no code option. Um, and as I say, uh, it ultimately led us to use to your tool from both an ease of use perspective and it was cost effective compared to the others as well. Brilliant, brilliant. So uh, safe to say, okay, you, you knew you were, uh, you needed to, to change the modus, the day-to-day the -day operations, you needed to get processes going. You, you went out to the marketplace, checked out uh, three vendors in this case, you then go through that and you selected for Forma in this case and then Obviously, you now have to implement your changes. So you now, you've done the sort of, I wouldn't say the easy part, but you've done the um, non-intrusive part where you've actually gone through the selection process. And how did you find the actual uh, implementation uh, of the processes and any of the challenges that you met? Yeah, it went very well, I think. Yeah, as I say, it went very well. I think we gave you a bit of a hard time because I, I recall we brought uh, one of your staff, Paul, back onto site and set him a blind challenge to uh, to build a process for us, which we'd already built using our, our developer. And he, he built it in half an hour. Our developer had taken two weeks on site to do that wow. uh, in the traditional fashion. So we were, we were very pleased. 
Yeah, so essentially once we settled on you as a, as a provider, we uh, selected a, a program you have, I think it's called the Sure Start onboarding yeah. process. Uh, um, we wanted to use the tool specifically in all areas of the business, not just operations, maintenance and projects, but marketing, retail, finance, procurement, anywhere where they were using paper forms and had inefficiencies and areas for development and improvement. So we selected 12 key business people. None yeah. of them are IT background. They're basically business analysts in those individual areas. And we trained them up uh, with your trainer. And uh, that's worked very well uh, to the extent now, uh, even with having had a big shutdown when we've been out of action for three or four months, we have about 30 flows built so far. And it's fair to say we've got quite a few hundred more to do in the future. Brilliant, brilliant. Now, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Uh, did you create any of those flows yourself? Uh, yes, I did, uh, is the uh, answer to that one. Um, I couldn't sell it to the site and uh, do the change management bits associated with this project without understanding how the tool worked and using it myself. So, you know, I sat down after the training and to be honest with you, it is very intuitive. It can yeah. be very complex in some areas, but provided yeah. you're starting off with some of the simple forms, yes, it, I, I think I've built around about a dozen or so myself and uh, a few of those are in use already. Oh, class. Um, now, I know you're, there are 30 flows, say, at, at the moment uh, in operation, which is a fantastic achievement. And as you say, it's just part of the first step nearly in it's only a starting point for you guys because you, you have way more that you want to implement. Did you find this? Um, we find this a lot say with clients where they may have an initial process like a quick win scenario did you so in other words to engage the rest of the business did you focus on one process and basically get buy-in was that the kind of uh, way you approached it yes you're absolutely right it's always good to have a, a quick win and something that demonstrates the functionality uh, we were very lucky we had some young engineers had a particular issue with some uh, work requests that go around the site which we were legally obliged to retain. Um, and a, quite a number of those paper documents were lost with it being such a big site, you know, yeah. it's approximately 2,000 acres. So uh, they wanted uh, us to solve the problem and we had the tool to do that. And uh, we very quickly built up um, the form and the workflow process for them. And I had a look uh, prior to this and we only did it before Christmas and we've already got um, somewhere in the region of 3,000 um, forms have gone through that uh, digitized process to date. Fantastic. Yeah, that's great. Um, and a great basis from a reporting point of view for everybody also. Um, yeah. Yeah, because we find, I mean, it's funny, even though places would have a lot of manual documents in, in place, the fact of applying a process and something that kind of can be overlooked is that okay you've, you've saved a lot of time you've but it's the integrity of the data so you're actually getting you don't have to transcribe information from forms into a database now or onto spreadsheets or anything like that you're getting a pre-validated information on your processes did you I, I presume that has a big impact on the integrity of the data Absolutely, and it was part of the natural evolution here because once we started to digitize the forms and the workflows, obviously with using SharePoint, you've got tables and lists, et cetera, associated with those. And quite quickly, um, the businesses saw that they could extract data very quickly. And we've started now to use some apps to do some charting, uh, you know, so we can look at uh, process improvement, look at where yeah. blockages in the process are, delays in the process, and get some stats as well to see how well we're doing with some of those um, processes that we've built. So it's been, you know, quite a, quite a good journey. Yeah, brilliant. Um, just, I mean, I know you're explaining it quite eloquently now through the questions so far, but uh, from a sort of categorization point of view, if you could, uh, categorize the benefits, uh, group the benefits that you think the flow forma and the automation of your processes has benefited SR oil. Yeah, uh, I suppose the, the most beneficial element is the uh, speed that those processes can now go through. If you can imagine a big site moving paper around, getting signatures on documents, very cumbersome, yeah. very time time consuming. I mean, I said five times faster, but in a lot of cases, it's far, far faster than that. 
Yeah. Um, and we have the traceability with those processes, as I mentioned, you know, we're talking about producing uh, visualization charts now, looking for continuous improvements. It's all part of a wider digital transformation journey that uh, the company is going on at the moment. Um, one thing I, sh I should have mentioned as well, we haven't just let loose um, these analysts around the site with the tools so that they can generate forms left, right and center. We have a, a centralized development area where they develop the forms, Class. forms and then they move them into the live areas or the production areas of SharePoint. But we have a team uh, of several people, including myself, who vet those processes so that we make sure that they're prioritized. We pick the ones with the, you know, the biggest benefits first and work our way through them. And we don't have any processes there that we, we might want to get rid of as well because some of the paper processes are no longer valid. Yeah. Um, Okay, I mean, with Flowforma being sort of our, uh, and your automation process, you now have your data that's been uh, pre-validated, you have uh, sequences in regards that people have to do things in the right order, and it, but do you see this like sort of, a, is it just a starting point for you, like the, your use of the, the information that you've gathered, the fact that you're actually on that sort of efficiency uh, road do you see other, say, integration with other systems, that sort of, do you see anything else happening in the future with you? Yes, absolutely. As I say, it's a start of a journey for the company and, uh, you know, uh, uh, Flowforma and SharePoint are just two elements of a bigger picture, uh, but it's certainly been a great enabler around a lot of our, as I say, our old paper-based processes and uh, the sites have taken to it very, very well. Um, yeah. We've just been through a big shutdown where the site's been doing a four yearly maintenance cycle for about three months so next week we'll start to pick up some more of this work on on the wider digital transformation uh, so uh, the answer is yes it's been a very worthwhile exercise yeah we've we've come across um companies where okay flow forward they, they basically need to say right we need to settle uh, get the right information get it being done efficiently but then especially in your industry the next sort of steps would be i mean predictive analysis, uh, analysis, that sort of thing. Would you have looked, would you be looking in that direction at all? Yeah, absolutely, Shay. Um, we don't just look at historical trends. We're actually now, as you say, coincidentally, uh, especially with some of the maintenance and operation of plants, we'd, we're actually looking at uh, predicting uh, how we would run some of these processes using historical information. Uh, mm. I don't want to go into too much detail, but because uh, no. some of the things we're doing are cutting edge uh, yeah. in the industry, um, there's not many refineries doing this sort of thing. Um, you know, so sure. it is a very valuable. Uh, it's part of our continuous improvement journey. We have a team who are looking into all areas of continuous improvement, uh, and yeah. I sit on that team. And yeah, IT is 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 a big element of that. So basically, yeah, with this digital transformation, obviously being a, a large component of the, the future uh, within SR, safe to say are you, you're, it's playing a big role, this automation of your processes. Yes, absolutely. Uh, it's integral to the business. Um, and as I say, we'll be doing more of it over the coming uh, months and years. Uh, I find it astounding that we only started sort of the middle of last year on this yeah. journey, and it's it's cascaded immensely throughout the uh, refinery here. Yeah, it, it would be typically be one of the areas where people get a bit of a not say a, a fright that they, they actually can't. It's nearly too good to be true that you can turn around uh, uh, your processes and have them automated. Uh, so so quickly even though you're still managing everything yourself and doing your day-to-day -day work you can actually get these processes up, up and running uh, at such a pace so uh, that doesn't uh, that doesn't yes, surprise uh, me. And, uh, yes and as i say we we'll start with the quick wins some of the easier processes we are working our way through to some of the more complex management of change processes that are used on a refinery but uh, as i say you need to engage with the people get them involved and have those quick wins if you really want the success Ah, great. I mean, I know I have, I have a final question for you here, but you, you've basically answered everything there in regards to why you actually chose uh, Flowforma uh, to automate your processes. I mean, the um, I'm, I'll let you answer, but I know uh, it, it, from our point of view, it's fantastic that you did choose, and it's great to, uh, we would profess what we do and we would show examples, but when a customer gets a grip on uh, the tool, 
and applies it um you know we can't understand why everybody isn't doing it but um so presumably there's no, there's no shocks here why you chose flow former on this slide no it was it was one of the nice projects this one um obviously uh, i mentioned before our procurement process says we have to look at at least three vendors and ideally um you know you, you want to get something that's cost effective but our primary objective here was we must have something that was easy to use for non-IT people because, uh, to be honest with you, we didn't want to keep employing expensive SharePoint programmers. Uh, um, so that was the primary objective. The cost-effective bit was the win because compared to some of your competitors, yeah. you're cost-effective. And the surprise was the no coding needed. We thought we might need a little bit of support from our IT programmer on this, yeah. but in in essence, unless you're doing extremely complex processes, you don't need yeah. an IT background to use your tool. That's great, and it's very intuitive. Yeah, listen, I, all I can do is thank you uh, for answering my questions uh, so far today. I will ask you to hang on though, um, just in case, and I, I would presume there will be questions uh, in a few minutes. And would you mind hanging on just in, in case I need to direct them in your direction? No, certainly, Shay. I'll just go on to mute and I'll cut back in when uh, it's appropriate. Thanks, Robert. Okay, guys, um, I, I really appreciate Robert uh, sharing his experience with, with uh, I, I know it's only over a short uh, period of time. Obviously, he went through an, a lot and the company went through a lot in, in regards to changing from manual to automation. But just from a background, from a product point of view, uh, just to give, if there's anybody on the call who really um, doesn't have much knowledge, say, of Flowforma and how it accomplishes these things uh, so efficiently. Um, big um, differentiator with Flowforma and other products is that it's, it's a three-in-one toolkit. So you got your forms, workflow, and document generation all in the one place. So you don't have to couple workflows with forms, etc. You know, um, and the fact that you've got a no-code uh, basis, then it just means that everything gets done faster. So you can use, utilize your Office 365 investment and you can even work off Azure and uh, be up and running really, really fast because it is an app. We don't store any of your data. It all sits in your tenancy. So uh, it's very important to realize that you're in full control of everything with all that goes on with uh, data and its integrity. You're in control of it all. We have none of it. Um, couple of pointers literally before what I want to do is I'm going to jump into a bit of a, a demonstration of the product and show you a couple of examples but big reasons in, in the, the industry and in your industries where you might love flow format and a differentiator is that you have when you create processes in flow format because all the forms are rendered in HTML5 they're mobile accessible automatically so you don't have to build apps they you have we have an app that's available you decide who gets to see it and the processes are available to those that have access rights and you can work online and offline uh, using your mobile access uh, it picks up geolocation some really nice features that as you can imagine mobile uh, apps would have massive components of uh, Flowform is the fact that you're self-regulating so you guys are in charge of designing the processes. I mean, we can help out, obviously. We can show you best practice, but in essence, you are going to implement your knowledge of your process without code and in the manner that you want to see it. It's all a self-building mechanism. There is an ability to extend the footprint of the product if you so wish. We do have an SD kit. Um, however, 92% of our clients uh, have never put a piece of code in. So the facility is there, but very few uh, would use it. We do have a lot of uh, experience in the oil and gas and construction industries, and um, a lot of the clients that we would deal with need to have that those components where they need mobile access, they need online, offline. They most uh, certainly need... Uh, regulatory, um, they adhere to regulatory compliance. And as a result, they have the confidence that because they've built everything themselves, they are compliant. Um, 
what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop in quickly to the product and so um, I don't want to keep you guys too long what I have here this is just a simple landing page and you may recognize the, the format of this is sitting in SharePoint at the moment and um, this is our default landing page for a trial environment and here we have a suite of some of our template processes and um, when you create a process it actually ends up as a URL so that URL can be distributed any way you like so it can be simple uh, icon on your desktop it can be a, a link on your intranet and uh, as I was saying earlier on you also it's automatically rendered also for the the mobile and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop into a couple of processes show you the look and feel of an automatically generated form and then go into the background and show you what happens so start off with a very simple one here it's just a safe safety observation uh, process and this is basically for those out and about where uh, they come across something that needs to be reported from a safety point of view and um, what you have here at the top of the screen is got you've you've got your header uh, in flow format you can have repeating information here typically it would be um, non-sensitive information so the likes of dates times users some descriptions etc and then you'd have your step bar at the moment there's only one step in this product uh, process but that will change um, I'm just gonna uh, within each step sorry you have then your questions so the questions we call it fields questions and you have the option of having these forms really dynamic so that's one of the most powerful areas of the product where without code you can just uh, make your screen transform with selections in this case I'm just going to um, put in an observation it's asking if I want an image on this and that's basically for the mobile so I could upload when you're using the mobile it knows that and it'll ask you do you want to take a photograph so here it just describes what the types of observations are in this case I'm just going to put in say a corrective observation quite simple I'll say an unsafe condition as you can see the screen keeps changing as I make selections uh, the observation let me see uh, bolts missing from stairs and describe my intervention um, used as you can see I'm not very good at DIY so uh, masking tape is kind of well used and um, follow-up action so I'm going to say yes in this case now what that does is it pops in a, a new step that the follow-up action is required I then get to state what that follow-up action is so um, get uh, bolts and secure notify health and safety something like that um, it automatically has picked up that my manager is me and the follow-up action has to go to me here we've got the wet signature capability this is again perfect for the mobile app where you can use your finger or a stylus on a, any touch screen so I can sign this and save my signature um, there's a number of ways of validating who has done this the wet signature is one of the ways and I'll show you another now in a second but I'm just going to submit that and so if I'm out and about I'm on my mobile app I literally would have gone through that process I would have uh, witnessed um, a safety um, problem would have uh, recorded signed it off and then this is the follow-up action that the next person has to deal with now in this case obviously it's a demo and I have to do it but so I have to get both secure and notify so is that complete I'm going to say yes now here's also an attachment so one thing that with flow former and I say it causes a three in one toolkit document generation is part of this and we don't have any limitations on how many documents you, you create or uh, use within the processes so here the safety observation report is created and it has the the information we've gathered in the process and it has my signature and um, this can be stored within SharePoint uh, it can be stored it can be emails can be attached to the steps so you basically have this report um, so from an audit point of view from a regulatory point of view you can create all the documentation you need through the process automatically
um, if I just submit, what will happen is the process will finish. So a very simple process um, with, with some really cool and neat uh, facilities within that. Now, um, what I'm going to do is show you just to do with the signature part. Uh, there is another method for gathering information in regards to from a validation point of view to see who has actually um, submitted this. Uh, in this case, we're going to do an incident. So you can see it's quite bland, straightforward looking uh, process. We have got four steps in this incident. First one is just a definition of what incidents are. I'm going to submit that to the next step. I'm happy that I've read that. So you can uh, even they can have a tick box to say yes, have read. So here you'll notice that you've got some uh, required fields because they have a red asterisk. You have some information on each of the uh, questions, which can be quite detailed. So you can have simple ones, that's just like a tooltip, or else you can have way more informative, like a, a help guide that has links to other documents or other uh, pages, etc. So I'm just going to, and these forms are automatically rendered. So uh, you didn't have to be no coding this, and I'll show you how that's done now in one second. So I'm just going to say site uh, 54, uh, category other, uh, description. So uh, who does this relate to? So in this case, I'm just going to pick an individual from my employee list. It'll pull in the data automatically. So you have all that data, data integration facilities within the, um, the functionality. I'm going to say it's a minor incident, uh, injury sustained. I'm going to say no. And again, I'm just going to put in a witness here, uh, Jane Doe. So here from a signatory point of view, I get to submit. Now, I'm now being asked for my uh, credentials again. So this is the e-signature capability within Flowform that is literally switch on off. Now, if I put in bogus information for my password and confirm, it'll tell me it's the wrong password. I will have to put in the correct information. Now, I'm on Office 365 here, so it is validating my Office 365 credentials. It says they're correct. The nice thing with all this, with the e-signature capability, et cetera, is that this has all been audited. So in the background, everything that I've been doing is being checked and audited. Um, again, from a regulatory point of view, it means that we can stand over the fact that Shea O'Connor actually did sign off that step. Um, here, just a regulatory reporting. If I said yes, it dynamically changes the form. If I say no, that's fine, move to the next step. The same again, incident investigation. If I say, uh, is it, is it, uh, a report expected? If I say yes, then I have to upload it. If I say no, that's fine. So I'm just going to submit that. But what I want to show you now is from an audit point of view, if I go back to that process, so I'll just have a look at my processes. And here that incident manager one that I just created. If I go to the items here, I've got an audit facility. So if I check that audit facility, it's now going to tell me all of the steps that have happened, all of the rules that were executed. It's going to tell me the signatures were checked and it was all validated throughout. This is a pure requirement from a regulatory point of view, from a compliance point of view, to see that everything was adhered to within that process. So not only do you have the process to show that, but you also have the audit log. What I'm going to do is pop in quickly to just show you what goes on in the background, because it's, for me, it's the most interesting part. So I will pop into, say, that incident management process. So as we were talking about earlier on, or as I was saying, you've got a, a three in one um, scenario. So this is your flow designer, which is basically my workflow and my forms being created all in the one place. And I include my document generation at this point as well. What you have on the left hand side is your process and the steps in your process. And within each step, you have what we call the questions and or fields within the step. You can do this well, basically manually by just uh, 
adding new steps and adding new questions, or you can actually do it visually. So we have not only a flow designer, but a visual flow designer also, which allows us to add new steps, uh, add parallel groups, put in pass back rules, etc. So you get that full workflow view uh, of your process. Now, and they're both totally linked together. So any changes I make here, I publish it to the flow designer, or else when you get used to it, like I am, I can just add steps here. So if I want to add a new step, I can just press add step. On the right-hand side, you get the option then of adding your rules. So once you create your process with your steps, what data you want to either see and or update, enter, you then apply your rules. Now, depending on where you are in the process, your availability of rules will change because uh, we work off lean methodology where you should only ever see what you need to see. So what's in here is exactly what you can do at step level. And then what you can do at question level is different again. So you have different options um, depending on where you are. So your rules will change. That's a shorter list, etc. I won't go through all the different rule types, but just to give you a sort of an overall feel, what you have here is workflow control, which is basically who sees what, um, where does the, who gets assigned the steps, et cetera. Again, all no code scenario. The data integration is probably the most powerful area within the system where you literally can, in this case, or these examples here is, I can execute SQL store procedures automatically once I obviously have the credentials to connect to a SQL Server database in this case, um, and run store procedures on the fly as I'm going through processes. I can also pull in list data from SharePoint. I can update list forms, add new records, etc. So it's really powerful. I can talk to other uh, processes within um, Flowforma, so I can update other forms, etc. I got my communications. I've got my permissions, etc. But well, I can show you here just in regards to a really simple example of how quick it is to do things. I can just add a new step. I could add an existing one, so I could reuse something that I've done before. But in this case, I'm just going to add a new step. So um, I'll just put in a, let me see. Uh, so let's put color webinar step. And it comes here at the, at the bottom. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this up here. So uh, I get some, uh, it makes it has more relevant. And what I could do is I can just add a few questions into it. So within the step, what I'll do is I just connect to, let me see, uh, first one. So I'm just going to call, say, username. And here, are my question types. Now, you're going to get every single SharePoint uh, question type available here, single line of text, choice fields, calculated fields, etc., numbers, dates, but also there's a few ones that are we have uh, included the likes of lookups. So you can look up uh, lists, you can look up SQL Server uh, tables, etc. You can add your wet signature here. You can also get geolocation, which is really cool. So basically with getting geolocation, you can automatically get the coordinates of uh, where the individual is when they are in the step uh, of the process. So these are all just default, again, out of the box uh, functionality. If here, if I just pick say person or group and I will, I could, be restrictive and go, they have to be part of a certain group, but I'm just going to pick up this, the current user. I'm going to save that. So that's in there. And um, what I'll do is I'll add two more questions and I'll put in a rule. So again, I could add a, an existing question if I had something that was done before that I know I was going to reuse. But in this case, what I'll do is just add, um, let me see, proceed. And I'm going to make that a yes, no. I'm going to make that a required field. I can put in my tooltip here when I can put in links, you know, for further information, that sort of thing. I'll just save that. And I'll put in one more question and a rule. And again, it's just to illustrate how quickly you can change a process. So I'm going to say explain. And I'm going to make that a multiple line of text. And I'll save that. So in this case now, in this step, I've got three questions. What I'm going to do with explain is I don't need to see that all the time, so I'm going to make that invisible. 
it should only be uh, and the username I'm going to make that disabled so because I don't need to edit that so in this case I'm going to put a rule behind proceed simple rule hide show question now all of the rules kind of work off the same premise you've got the description of the rule then you have your conditions so what has to happen for this rule to kick off and then what are the actions of the rule so here I'm just going to uh, add in a condition and always you're going to have that if statement in the back of your head so you're going to say okay in this step um, if proceed equals it could be not equals is blank greater than less than meets a pattern that sort of thing so I'm going to say if it equals no I could do more things I could make it and or that sort of thing as well um, but I'm just going to keep it simple one condition and I'm actually going to just have one action so in this case explain I want to show that again I could do more and that's how you get the screens uh, so dynamic so based upon simple rules you can hide show different pieces of information I'm going to save that and I'm just going to close it so the next time I run that process my step is now live and I'll just go in here so incident management so now we have instead of being a four-step process it's now a five-step process I'll submit to my next step so at the webinar step the username has been picked up automatically if I say yes nothing's going to happen uh, but if I say no then the explain uh, multiple line of text appears now I haven't put in any rules in regards to um, what should happen as a result of putting in a not to proceed I could do an exit out of the process when I've submitted this but you get the idea so that's just a simple addition of a step and a rule and again there's no programming there's no all you have to do is know where to go and in our training all that ever happens is that we show you um, where are the rules that you need to apply because we don't have any rules that like well we haven't come across any rules recently that uh, people are looking for that are not part uh, of the process and um, one thing I just wanted to uh, make you aware of is that each of the steps they are tasks in our world okay so here in the work items area it's a really cool feature where if I have some sort of SLA around um, my processes so for example say recording of an incident or um, the incident investigation if that has to be done by a certain date or time here within the work items you can have a reassigning of a work item and or an alert and it works the same way basically it's worked it's it's based upon uh, time so I can reassign that work item it's a timed event it could be on days hours or a particular date so a date that actually appears say within your process so in this case if this isn't done within sort of four hours what I want to do is reassign that work item it could be to an, a group so in this case uh, it goes to let me see uh, could go to any of these so be, as you can see you got a lot here um, I can um, send it to an individual who's defined on a question so somebody who's actually part of a question the user they get that step and or um, somebody who's already been assigned to another step now they get to do this step as well the same thing works off off alerts okay so I'm just going to close that also a nice feature um, as you're going through the process is all of the data in regards to steps and how they're proceeding is all gathered together so I can have a look and see in my processes what sort of how are my SLAs so you can view how your SLAs are looking I can look at all of them if I wish so I can see everything that's um, um, in operation at the moment within my environment so I can see there's a lot of safety observations going on uh, but also I can look at historical flow analysis now 
the historical flow, ana flow analysis is really cool because it's going to check out my bottlenecks. So I'm going to be able to see if there are bottlenecks within my process because it looks at complete ones as well as uh, processes that are actually in motion. So for example, if I pick um, site surveys, I can see that the second step compliance check is really, really slow. Um, I could decide to obviously pick other ones and you get it with a lot more steps and you get to see the simple bottlenecks that occur within the process. But it's just a simple way of viewing uh, how efficient your, not only are your process, but your steps within the process. Because I mean, here, for example, you got all of these steps, then you can see, and you can select and see which ones are out of, which ones are delayed, who they're assigned to, et cetera, et cetera. Now, that's just a brief um, view at Flowforma. There's a hell of a lot of um, other details that I'd like to go into, but I, I don't want to uh, have you fall asleep at your uh, keyboards and you, everybody has, has busy days. I'm just going to pop back to uh, my slides. Do we have any questions? Have we, have we received any questions? Okay. Robert, if you're there, I have a question that's come in for you. Um, did SR yes, have... Yes, I've uh, taken the mute off. I hope you can hear me. <laughs> okay. Uh, did SR have broken and fractured processes? And did they fix these issues first or use Sure Start to fix them? So did you have broken and right. fractured? Right. Um, the answer to that is yes, we did come across broken processes. Uh, we didn't purely use sure start to fix those. It was discussed during the training. I think one thing I would like to um, make clear, it's always best to sort your process out before you start transitioning it to a digitized format using the likes of Flowforma. Um, so what we did internally here was we, because a lot of our business processes weren't mapped out, to be honest with you. So uh, we used a, you know, a simple tool um, uh, called a swim lane diagram and mapped oh, yeah. out our business processes and looked for the areas that were causing us pain and decided to uh, sort out the process before we digitized it. Um, seemed to be the best strategy. Um, it's not as difficult when you're dealing with internal customers, but if you've got broken processes dealing with external customers, they're going to give you some real grief. Um, so I say my uh, my coaching there would be sort your processes out before you digitize them if you can. Very good. Okay. I have another one here, uh, and uh, you may be able to answer this as well. But I, I can answer it, or you, I'll tell you, Robert, you can answer it. Uh, what did you What did you need to have in place uh, to get Flowform up and running? Like, did you need any other technologies? Uh, well, we already had SharePoint 2013. Um, without going into the technical details, we had an IT guy uh, in our. Uh, IT department who looks after the SharePoint uh, infrastructure and he picked up uh, the task of implementing the Flowformer uh, application in the SharePoint environment and uh, it was as simple as that. We put a, a test site together so we could uh, build flows offline and once they were approved and tested they were migrated into the production SharePoint environment and it was as simple as that really. Cool. Yeah, I think all the questions. I think I think people probably don't believe me because they're all directed at you at the moment, Robert. I have another one for you. <laughs> um, um, what would you say? What would Robert say? The shortest and the longest build. Now I know there's a kind of how long is a piece of string, but it's, I, I guess it's your take on how long does a build or take to build a process, and did you have any big ones and small ones? Uh, yes, the answer to that is yes. Uh, simple processes such as, say, you demonstrated some of those, the ones, you know, like um, um, raise a, a safety issue while walking on site on the refinery or raising a maintenance request. I can quite confidently build one of those within an hour uh, using Flowformer and then, you know, play around with it and improve it if I want to. Um, but we also have what's called, and if you work on a refinery, you will be familiar with what's called plant change or management of change, which is essentially small projects. And the one that we use is an Excel one, which is extremely 
uh, lengthy and uh, we have had support from one of your programmers with that one and it took about a week to build but having said that compared to uh, the cost of going other routes it's been extremely cost effective and we'll be trialing that uh, on site when our turnaround finishes next week yeah that, that's sort of something i kind of I, I had thought about earlier on i forgot to say it to you and that was i mean i know when people are looking at getting systems and changing and you know bringing in technology and so on and everybody starts looking at the roi and you kind of go you know it's costing us x amount to bring this in did you go did you actually look at say the potential uh, saving on, on professional services was that a consideration when you looked at, at the system absolutely it has to be in this day and age cost is always a uh, you know a figure in these things yeah 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 no it's just it is it's something that we come across where uh, companies would focus say on the actual technology cost and the initial say implementation but don't take it into consideration the fact that we're actually going to be doing this ourselves and we have a saving there you know it it it, it doesn't get enough emphasis i don't think um i have got one here um okay well i guess rob you could do this as well um who's the best person within the organization uh, to deploy a process um so would the person need training so i mean you could answer that one deploying a process uh, it could be anyone within the business it depends how simple or how complex that process is um, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah I'm just trying to understand what what you're trying to get out of this so uh, uh, as I say a very simple our, process yeah from our point of view we would kind of look at uh, someone with analytical mind you know as in somebody knows the process uh, maybe it's an analyst it could be just even the process owner so did you find i mean we've found it that way but did you find that firsthand that the people who are going to deploy the processes basically once they uh, can analyze the process they're good to go yes you're absolutely right and you don't need to be uh, you know a, a really sort of techie business analyst to develop some of these processes some of our simpler ones were sort of I seem to remember one of the security ones is you know uh, you know uh, bringing a visitor onto site so you basically identifying when the visitor is coming to site who the company is where they're going who they're visiting that sort of thing that process yeah. very simple to build some of the other ones so you know some of the finance processes and some of the uh, procurement processes are, are more complex and you would need someone who's close to the business process itself to build yeah. um, to build it yeah yeah okay um i, I kind of just one that has come in uh, as well and I, I think i kind of covered it earlier on in the question types but can you capture location details uh maybe on a map so just in regards to that we have a default uh, question type that's called get location and what that uh, pulls in automatically is the longitude and latitude of the precise location of where you are now those credentials or those details can be then uh, applied to a map and you can see exactly where it is there's actually tons of, of um, components that you can use and that companies can use to literally use longitude and latitude to uh, pinpoint where the individual was so i mean from the sort of question types point of view um we do have a long list of the options and we are increasing those all the time just to make things easier um and again like especially from the mobile point of view it's a big focus um from our uh from our roadmap because we find more and more clients are using the mobile device because you can use it online and offline so um having the likes of geolocation wet signature etc is quite important um i have another question here um what has the you okay yeah that's a good one what what has the user adoption been like so uh, somebody here is saying that they have spent months on a, a previous uh, solution uh, and it lies on use now i've come across that before uh, does SROL manage all their own processes so basically user adoption uh, what's that been like and do you manage all your own processes 
Yeah, uh, when we rolled out the tool, the user adoption was was very good. Uh, one thing I did mention is that uh, at the start of this year, we went into a refinery shutdown. We're coming out of that next week. We have to uh, sort of, um, should we say, resurrect uh, some areas of the business who have been away from uh, using the IT tools for a while. But uh, with it being so simple to use, I think that's part of the um, you know, uh, user adoption journey that we've had here. If it had been very complex, it might have switched people off a bit. And to answer the second part, most of our processes are managed uh, on our own, uh, you know, in-house. Very good, very good. Um, I, can, I think one more uh, question, probably have time for one more. Um, how long does it take to uh, get up and running on the system from a training point of view? So the training cycle, uh, now, I can answer the first part of that, as in we there's there's a two day training course. Basically, it consists of 12 hours um, of tutorials um, that's available to get to advanced level. But I might ask you, Robert, how long do you think? I mean, I know that, OK, you can get trained up in two days. That's great. But uh, did you find that the training cycle, how did you find that? Was it uh, straightforward? Uh, yes, we took the two-day training option. Um, it's fair to say there is a lot in that training, and it goes into some of the more complex areas of using Flowformer. Yeah. Um, you know, so uh, when you get back out of the training exercise, uh, once you start to do the simple forms, you, you you do really understand how easy it is, and you pick it up quite quickly. But it's good, I think, to do the two-day training exercise. Otherwise you won't know what's available to use within the tool and how to exploit it yeah great great I mean again our training is, is it's usually centered around uh, where you can find things um, because most people actually know what they want to do and it's just where do I find that um, so yeah that's great um, so I mean I think we've now come to an, an end of the, the webinar and I really want to thank everybody for attending. I hope it has um, been educational. I really, Robert, I so appreciate uh, you taking the time out to give us your experiences because um, it's invaluable to get first-hand experience um, on something like this and to hear the sort of uh, warts and all of, of how things go on. Um, just again, from a housekeeping point of view, um, anybody who wishes to try out Flowformer, it's really easy to do. You can download it, uh, a 30-day trial from uh, the App Store. Uh, and or if you just want to see something, you can uh, book a demo with us and we can uh, put together a proof of concept for you. It tends to make a lot more sense when you see something of your own there. We'll put in the time, put something together for you and um, show you it so you can actually maybe show it within your company to your own audience, but it actually, it helps in, in understanding how your actual processes uh, might look. So once this is completed, it'd be great if you could fill out the survey at the end, because uh, we really uh, appreciate the feedback. And again, Robert, thank you so much. No, thank you, Shay, it's been a pleasure. Thanks. Okay, guys, I'm gonna sign off now. Take care, bye-bye. Bye now.